This video is sponsored by Delicious. This sandwich is a Philly cheesesteak, and if my reaction doesn't give it away, I think it's nothing short of legendary. Before I started working on this video, I had no idea if you could even make a Philly cheesesteak at home, but now I know that assuming you follow a few simple techniques, it's actually quite easy. But first, let's zoom out for just a second here. Why am I making Philly cheesesteak today? Well, two reasons. Firstly, the sponsor of this video, Delicious. Delicious is a platform that shares the stories behind a wide variety of high quality American grown products people over here in Europe and the world should really know more about. They reached out and asked if I was interested in making an American dish using American ingredients. And I was like, yes please, because, and that brings us to reason number two, almost 10 years ago on my first ever trip to the United States, I got to try a real deal Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia itself in a place called Pat's King of Steaks. According to Philadelphia street lore, as well as their own website, this is apparently where the steak sandwich, as well as the cheese steak sandwich, were invented somewhere around the 1930s. And while I can't verify that story 100%, what I can verify is that their cheese steak tastes amazing. So let's start working on that, shall we? The elements we need to take a closer look at are the meat, the cheese, the bread, and then of course, the assembly, how to put everything together. So let's begin with the meat, and this is it, almost two kilos of real deal US beef. And going for US beef really makes sense in this case, not just for its great flavor, but because this right here is a flank steak, an inexpensive cut that is very, very common in the US, but for some reason, really hard to come by here in Germany. Flank steak is quite special because it's fairly thin and has a long grain structure, which is why I first like to cut it lengthwise into a more workable size. And by the way, look at this beautiful marbling. And then using a heavy cleaver, I cut it as thinly as I can against that long grain to get that almost shaved beef that is traditionally used for Philly cheesesteak. And by the way, in case you haven't figured it out, I did put the beef in the freezer for about an hour or two to firm up, which dramatically improves the slicing experience. This might not be as thin as machine cut beef, but it is definitely gonna do the trick. But let's set that meat aside for just a second and work on our next important element, the cheese. Enter American cheddar. I was sent these two types to try and let me tell you they both taste really, really good. I thought the milder cheese in particular would go great with a cheesesteak, so I started working on that. However, normally cheddar would not really be a first choice when it comes to cheesesteak. It would usually be more like provolone, American cheese, or even cheese whiz. Yes, I'm talking processed cheese sauce, but actually that's exactly what I decided to make. Did you know? you can turn any cheese, pretty much, into a sauce by melting it into evaporated milk. Optionally, you can add a bit of turmeric for that nice and fake yellow cheese color. And speaking of fake, this cheese sauce actually tasted too good, like too gourmet, if that makes any sense. So what I did is I also added some processed cheese I had in the fridge, just a little bit, and that really did the trick and balanced it out with just a hint of that cheesy fast food goodness. And that, my friends, is how you make a cheese sauce. But now let's talk about bread. And don't worry, this is not bread that I imported from the US, no. This is a regular baguette loaf I got at a local supermarket. It tastes great, but it has one problem compared to a hoagie roll you'd use in the United States. It's way too crusty. But don't fret, let me show you a neat little trick instead. You can take any white bread, and it can even be old and a bit stale, and then simply steam it for about two to three minutes. Let it rest for another minute or two right after and our once crusty chewy baguette is now pillowy soft and about as threatening to the roofs of our mouths as a Subway sandwich style hoagie. We're almost ready to cook and assemble our sandwich now, but, 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 I do wanna show you one little bonus recipe. 
and that would be soy glazed sweet potatoes. I don't know if you knew this, but the US are by far the world's biggest sweet potato exporter. So if you recently had sweet potato, chances are it was an American one. My favorite way to eat them is to make a dish inspired by Korean gamja jorim, a very similar dish made with regular potatoes. All you gotta do is pan fry some sweet potato cubes until they're nice and golden, add a mix of soy sauce, sugar and water and braise them in it for about you know five to ten minutes or until fork tender. Reduce the sauce until it's nice and sticky, sprinkle with sesame seeds and you get a truly delicious side dish you can enjoy hot or cold anytime. And I think the sweetness goes quite well with say a Philly cheesesteak. But let's actually get to that Philly cheesesteak of my dreams. To make that, I'm gonna add just a bit of cooking oil into a super hot cast iron pan. Then I like to go for about 200 grams of sliced flank steak per person. Season that with salt, a sprinkle of MSG, and if you like, some freshly cracked black pepper. Once your steak is about 70% cooked through, move it aside and add a bit of extra oil to the pan and then go in with about a handful of thinly sliced white onions and roughly the same amount of chopped green bell peppers. The bell peppers are not actually part of the super traditional cheesesteak, but they are a common addition and I personally think they add quite a lot to the dish. This should only take like another minute or two, at which point you can stir everything together and set it aside. With that, it's finally time to assemble that Philly cheesesteak. First, I'm gonna apply a very generous schmear of our US cheddar sauce on both sides of my steamed bread, then fill it with as much chopped steak as I can realistically fit in there. This already looks pretty amazing on its own, but I think we can do even better. Let's make this a full meal, shall we? First, some of our glazed sweet potatoes, then a little side of roasted and salted California almonds, one of my favorite snacks, and why not also crack open a can of ice cold IPA? Now, don't get me wrong, we have amazing beer over here in Germany, but when it comes to pale ales, I gotta admit the US brewers might just have a leg up on us. Stone Brewing sent us a whole tasting menu of their beers and AP and I both loved it. I think with that, we got ourselves a full meal. And after so many years, I finally got to taste a Philly cheesesteak again, which definitely brought me back. Let me once again thank Delicious for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check their website and see what types of food products the US like to send out into the world and what makes them so special and tasty. As always, you can find the link below, but now I hope you excuse me while I finish my delicious PCS and of course, all of my other tasty snacks. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.